So today we are going to be taking a look at Kali Linux for the Raspberry Pi 4. Kali Linux is a hacking operating system based on Debian. So if you're coming from Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu or something like that, you will be familiar with the package manager because it still is apt. And overall it comes pre-installed with tons of hacking applications that I honestly do not know what most of them do. So there is a ton of stuff in here and it is a pretty interesting operating system to be running on a Raspberry Pi. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at the, the desktop and really seeing what it has. But before we get started, I do want to mention that to install this, you actually go over to the Kali Linux ARM webpage and you download the image for the Raspberry Pi 4. You can either download this 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. I personally downloaded the 64-bit version because I thought it would be a better test for this video. But you can go with whatever one you want. After downloading it, flash it with the Raspberry Pi Imager or Etcher. But sadly, it will not USB boot. I tried doing it and it will not. So that is kind of a bummer because nowadays most operating systems on the Raspberry Pi do actually USB boot but this one does not so you actually do have to run it from an SD card so that is kind of the downside of this operating system but overall it looks like a really interesting one to check out on the Raspberry Pi 4 so let's go over to the desktop and take a closer look alrighty so Kali Linux uses XFC as its desktop environment so you might be familiar with it if you've used XFC before but so it does look like a pretty clean desktop. We have our nice Kali Linux wallpaper right here and Kali Linux is brought to us by Offensive Security. And right here, just like the default XFC, we have our home, file system, and trash. On the top bar right here, it kind of has a transparency. It does look really clean like that. And right here we have our leave buttons, lock buttons, and some computer stuff like that, notifications, um, sound and ethernet and time so it looks pretty cool over here we have our two desktops so we can switch over to different desktops if we do like right here we have a Kazama screen recorder we have a terminal we have our files and then we have another app right here so it looks pretty slick and then right here if we click here we actually have all our applications that are pre-installed and it is kind of like the default XFC menu but they've changed it up added some more animations and it looks really cool so let's go to and look at the applications that come pre-installed but right before that let's take a look at the system resource issues so right here let's type in htop and oh htop is not installed Got to do that real fast because I actually just recently flashed this, so I really haven't had that much time to take a look at it. But overall, so far, it's looking like a really clean and slick desktop. Uh, much more customized XFC than the default version, definitely. Right here, now let's say, type in HTOP, and right here on a fresh boot, we are using 429 megabytes of RAM. So it's still, it's not that much RAM, it's a good desktop. I mean, LXD or like Raspberry Pi OS is obviously going to use less RAM, but for most Raspberry Pis, even a 2 gig Pi, 400 megabytes of RAM on idle isn't that big of a deal. It's you, you will have enough RAM to do everything else. So RAM usage is pretty clean on here, and if we do type in NeoFetch real fast, we see we have the nice Kali Linux logo right here, and it's Kali Genio Linux, and our Raspberry Pi model, our kernel, and our 16 minutes, and all our packages. So it looks pretty clean. And one thing I saw was cool, they're actually not using the XFC terminal, they're using the QT terminal, which they borrowed from LXQT, I think. But it, I'm glad they use this one because we have the nice transparency in the back right here, and it really does look like a really clean terminal. So yeah, now let's go back to the application and see what we have. So right here, we have an, we have all applications, or we can go right here to information gathering. So these are all these hacking apps. I Like I said before, I am not, I don't have knowledge in any of this stuff. So if you're looking for hacking guides or anything like that, go to a different video probably because I have no knowledge about this whatsoever. And I really can't explain to you guys what this is because I don't know. But yeah, so we have a lot more hacking applications in here, web web application analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks. I know I do know this, the friggin' Wi-Fi cracker helps you crack other Wi-Fi's passwords. I'm not exactly sure how to use it, but I did see a video on it. So that does also look pretty cool. We have reverse engineering, exploitation tools, sniffing and snoofing, post-exploration, forensics, reporting tools, and then social engineering tools. So there are a lot of hacking apps in here. So if you're into this kind of thing and you have a Raspberry Pi, 
Kali Linux might be an operating system for you because it really does look pretty much like the normal Kali Linux and there are tons of stuff in here. We have Kali Offsec 2 and then right here we have settings which I'll go over settings in a minute and then this is the part that I actually know. We have usual applications. I know about this stuff. I don't really know about the other stuff. In accessories right here we have application finder, bull rename catfish file search, cherry tree which is kind of like LibreOffice, clipboard manager which is nice. We have screenshot. Oh, I did install those. I'll talk about that in a minute. We have terminal emulator, Thunar file manager, which is a really nice file manager. And I like the theming they've done here. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, let's go back real fast. And you see it really does load up pretty quick for a ra operating system on our Raspberry Pi 4. So that is a really good sign. In development right here, we have two different development apps. Graphics, we have Restore Image Viewer, which is a pretty nice image viewer. Internet, we actually come pre-installed with Chromium and Firefox. So that is really nice, but I do want to mention this is not the full Firefox. Sadly, it's only the Firefox ESR version. I would like to see the full Firefox on here, but this version still does perform a lot better than Chromium on here. I don't know how, but Firefox is probably an easy web browser to use if you do use Kali Linux. Over here in Multimedia, we have Kazam, which I'll talk about too, Perola Media Player, Pulse Audio, in Office, we have a document viewer. You could install LibreOffice if you did want to. In Other, right here, we have Oh, I'll talk about those two in a minute. In System, yeah, so we have a good amount of applications here too. So it really is looking like a really nice full operating system for your Raspberry Pi with good performance. So now I want to talk about the Kazam Multimedia Screen Recorder. It actually does work really well on here. It comes pre-installed and I can actually take a whole video. So I'm going to click capture. I'm doing a full screen capture right here. All I do is I click capture. It says five, four, three, two, one, and it's going to start recording my screen. You can see on the top right here, so it is recording. So let's just like open up a terminal right here and do something. Let's type in NeoFetch. You see, we have NeoFetch over here. Now let's go watch that recording and see if it actually did play. So click right here, and we just go right here to finish recording. Alrighty, and then we go continue to save it to wherever we want. I'm going to save it to my video folder right here. I click save. And now to watch it, we can actually close out of Kazam. And then we can actually open up our file manager right here. We go over to videos. Right here is videos and we go open folder. In open folder, we do have our screenshot right here and click on it and it automatically launches. And if we make this full screen, you see the video playback. I mean, it, it was a pretty good screen recorder to be honest it played really well you see everything actually did happen as it's supposed to and usually when these screen recorders do do on the raspberry pi they actually make your performance worse this one actually our performance was still good and it was a good video recording so it's cool that that comes pre-installed actually so let's just exit out of our terminal and then right here i also wanted to show the undercover mode so kali undercover mode has been a really cool thing to see that they put it pre-installed you type kali undercover mode click that one right there give it a second to change and your whole desktop is gonna change right now it is really cool so you have to log in once more just type kali and kali so the default password and username still are kali it's just default like that look at here Look at this Windows. Man, doesn't this look exactly like Windows? I mean, it doesn't look like Windows when you click this bar right here. But if you were just showing a friend like this from far away, they probably could not tell that this is not Windows if they're not very into tech. But I really like all the icons. They have really made this thing perfection. This thing looks amazing. The terminal obviously looks like CMD. And... It performs the same way. This thing is amazing to see how well they've implemented this Windows theme into this operating system. And our Windows bar right here actually explains a little more because we can see all those icons a bit bigger. And it really does look incredibly well. I really have had an amazing time playing around with this because it just looks amazing. And it's so cool that they implement it. A lot of operating systems don't do that. And if we want to exit this scene, we just type undercover mode we just click that and it automatically switches our theme back so it's really that easy to switch you don't even have to really reboot or do anything like that so it's super easy to do and it works incredibly well so now I want to take a look at some web browsing and see how that performance actually ends up being so I'm going to be using Firefox for this test because 
I, like I said a minute ago, I tested Chromium, and Chromium was kind of sluggish, and it kept on freezing on me. Firefox has been really good. And over on the Kali Linux website right here, there are a ton of information. So if you want to get into this hacking stuff, this website might be interesting to you. And here, let's say we want to type in Amazon. Just type in Amazon real fast. It loads up pretty quickly. I can click on it. And another tab, we type in Pi 4. And then we just go over to the Raspberry Pi or website right here. And we like we're looking, it loads up pretty fast, and web browsing is incredibly smooth. I was surprised how smooth this operating system actually ended up being. We go back back right here, and yeah, so web browsing is definitely a go. Like most operating systems on the Raspberry Pi 4 do handle web browsing pretty well. Alrighty, so here we are with the video playback, and I am running this 720p video, and you see it is playing pretty smooth. You can see right here, as of now, it says zero frames have been dropped, so that is some pretty good 720 video playback. 1080 probably would drop a few more, obviously, because, but I mean, overall, the video playback on Kali Linux is looking incredibly smooth. This is not skipping any frames whatsoever, and I mean, it, it's it's really smooth video playback. It's not screen tearing. It's not doing anything of that sort. So this video playback is incredibly incredible. I don't know why I said that, but yes, this is really good video playback for the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm surprised with the web browsing and video playback in Firefox. It's looking pretty good. And one more thing, because this is a Debian-based distro, apps like PyApps and PyKiss will also work. So I installed PyApps on here, and it's totally functional because this still is a Debian-based operating system. So I was actually pretty happy about that because I was worried that it was not going to work, but it actually does work. So let's install a simple app in the internet folder, like let's say we want Discord. We click install and it's going to work totally fine because this still is a 64 bit operating system. It automatically goes ahead and downloads the dev from uh, the GitHub page and it works. So Kali Linux really has came a long way on the Raspberry Pi and it is looking pretty good. Type in my password right there and you see it is installing. Yeah, so there we go. I mean, this is Kali Linux on the Raspberry Pi. It basically has every application you, essential application you need pre-installed, and it has a lot of app support because most Raspberry Pi OS applications also do work on here. So it really is an amazing distro for the Raspberry Pi 4, and especially if you're into hacking, this operating system probably is for you because there are tons of stuffs in here, and it really does look amazing. So this is Kali Linux on the Raspberry Pi 4. And if you thought this video was cool, please hit that like button, and it would be amazing if you subscribe. And thanks for watching.